Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X research and professional physicist. And today I'd like to bring to you another one of my articles. This one is entitled The Connection Between Hurricanes, Water Spouts, and Comets. Now, figure one below shows a gravitational vortex produced in water when a small hole is made at the bottom of the container. The vortex forms due to the Earth's gravitational field pulling on the water. The water right above the hole falls in, causing water above it to move downwards as well. They move as if they are attracted to the hole, and thus the hole acts as a source of gravitational field, attracting matter toward it. But a source of gravitational field generates a stationary gravitational wave, which has a central hollow, so that the water spirals around the hollow. The direction in which the water spirals is determined by the local magnetic field. A gravitational field never exists by itself. There are always electric and magnetic effects, which always coexist with the gravitational field because the same charged particles, mainly protons and electrons, give rise to all three fields. So here's these uh, gravitational vortices. The or water vortices, and these are created by a hole at the bottom of a container. So that the water starts moving towards the hole, it's attracted towards the hole, so the hole is acting like a source of gravitational field. But the vortex always has a hole in the middle, a hollow space in the middle, and that is due to the fact that the gravitational field produces uh, or has a gravitational wave associated with it that has a central minimum. Now, figure two below shows a water spout in the Earth's atmosphere. There it is. A water spout is basically the same as a tornado, but it moves over water, whilst a tornado moves over land. A hurricane is similar to both, as it too is a vortex, but a hurricane is much larger, and the vortex usually only affects the atmosphere, and it is not strong enough at surface level to draw water or solid objects up into the upper atmosphere. So here's a water spout, and it's a gravitational vortex. It's actually uh, the same as a vortex in water, except it's, well, it is a water vortex, but it acts in the opposite direction. Water can be seen spiraling upwards around a central space. You can actually see the water here forming the spiral as it moves upwards into that cloud. Water is forced upwards by a gravitational force which pulls it upwards. In other words, the gravitational force which is pulling this water upwards is uh, the source, has to be up here somewhere. It's not caused by the Earth, it's caused by something else. Now, water uh, spout is a water vortex, but in reverse to what we see in figure one. Water is being drawn from the surface of a big container, the ocean, up into the air. Because the water is spiraling upwards, the source of the gravitational field, which is creating the vortex, must be at the top of the spout. What is the source of gravitational field? It most certainly is not the Earth. A natural gravitational field can only be created by the existence of a massive object. Therefore, there must be a massive object at the top of the spout. The object must be surrounded by cloud. So it is not visible, but it must be there nevertheless. What kind of object is this? It is a Planet X object, or stellar core, one of the energy-depleted objects which invade the solar system, coming in as comets. And you may look at Article 367 entitled Planet X coming in as comets and affecting the Earth. They draw energy from the Sun and are often seen in the Sun's corona, which is the Sun's atmosphere. Since stars and planets are not very different, if these objects go into the Sun's atmosphere, they will go into the Earth's atmosphere as well. And here you see one of these objects. You can see the vortex, the gravitational vortex under it, which has 
constant to connect to the sun and this is why these objects can hover in a stationary position with respect to the sun once this connection this gravitational vortex forms between the object and the sun so um, since tornadoes are the same type of gravitational vortices as water spouts but over land uh, have been observed in the Earth's atmosphere for a very long time. These objects must have been coming into the Earth's atmosphere for a very long time, at least since 1643. And for more details, you may look at Article 361 entitled Planet X Producing Gravitational Vortices in the Earth's Atmosphere since 1643. These objects are most likely very small, possibly the size of small moon cores. However, the incidence of tornadoes and water spout has greatly increased over the last 10 to 30 years, suggesting that more and more of these objects are reaching the Earth and entering our atmosphere. The reason why the stellar cores do not collide with the Earth is that they are star planetary or moon cores. Stellar cores generate positively charged surfaces. Thus, this surface will be repulsed by the Earth's core, which also generates a positively charged surface. The objects come in as comets, seem to spiral in toward the host body, which can be the Sun or the Earth, reach a minimum position at which time they may remain stationary with respect to the host. And you may look at Article 373 entitled Planet X Orbits for more details. But this only occurs if the gravitational attraction is strong enough for a vortex connection to form. So here we see two objects. This one represents the Earth. It, is, it has a positively charged core. It has a negatively charged outer layer. This could be a stellar core or a comet once it has absorbed some energy from the sun and it has absorbed some corona from the sun, then it will, it may have a small negatively charged uh, layer. Otherwise, these negative charges are absorbed because the object is low in energy. But in this case, um, I have drawn it as an object that has absorbed some energy uh, since it has come into the solar system. And now there are two forces acting on this object. There's the gravitational force, which is attractive, pulls it towards the Earth. And there's the electrostatic force, which is repulsive, which causes it to move away from the Earth. When these objects reach minimum distance, these two forces are in balance. And notice they are uh, the outer layers, the atmospheric layers, are in contact here. They are not repulsed until these make a connection because the negative outer layer shields the positive interior. Now, only at the critical minimum distance of altitude will the object be able to draw materials from the surface, be it ocean or land. Um, the object has to have enough gravitational energy to be able to reach that minimum critical distance. Otherwise, it's too far up and the vortex that it forms is not long enough to reach the surface of the Earth and does not form a, a full connection with the surface of the Earth, the object then will not hold a stationary position. Now, hurricanes are most likely produced by larger objects which have not yet gained enough gravitational energy to be able to spiral in as close to the surface as the smaller objects. And I talk about spiraling because as they approach um, the Earth or the Sun, they will go into an elliptical orbit and spiral around. That is, they will come to a perihelion position every couple of hours, but that perihelion position will decrease. They spiral in. And this is shown in Article 343. Now, so hurricanes spiral in, but and they may not reach uh, the lowest uh, critical distance, the minimum critical distance, because they may not have enough energy for that gravitational force to be strong enough to uh, be able to draw it in close enough to the planet, because the electrostatic force will always act against it. But as they gain gravitational energy through the atmospheric vortices which they create, uh, they will be able to come in close each time they approach the host object until they manage to reach the minimum critical 
a distance or altitude when a vortex forms between them and the Earth's oceans or surface. And this is illustrated here. Our stellar core, um, as it approaches a planet, if it's a very large uh, object, it may produce a stationary gravitational wave ring on the surface of uh, the object so if it's ocean it will be seen as a, a wave a tidal wave on the ocean as the object approaches the tidal wave increases in height it always has a central minimum it always has a central hollow and then once the object reaches the critical minimum distance a gravitational wave vortex forms it will also have a hollow in the center but this vortex makes a direct connection between the two objects and the stellar core will be able to draw material from the earth through it so in the earth's atmosphere uh, we have a water spout or a tornado here I've drawn a water spout which is uh, has reached the critical minimum distance so it's able to draw water from the ocean and it draws that uh, water and then it becomes part of the object's atmosphere whilst uh, a hurricane producing stellar core produces a larger vortex. We do know that hurricanes produce larger vortices, but these are only in the atmosphere. It does not go far enough because the object is not close enough to the surface, has not reached its critical minimum distance for its gravitational force to um, pull on the surface of the Earth strongly enough to produce that vortex connection. So it only makes a vortex connection with the atmosphere, can only draw atmosphere. It does create uh, winds, cyclonic winds below the vortex, and these are what we usually call hurricane force winds. But it is not able to draw water or dust into the upper atmosphere, which then becomes part of its atmosphere. This means that the objects that create tornadoes and water spouts have enough gravitational energy to reach the minimum critical altitude, but hurricane-producing stellar cores do not form water vortices, indicating that they do not have enough energy to reach the minimum critical distance to the Earth's surface. The vortices which they form in the atmosphere do not reach all the way to the surface and so on in the atmosphere. As air is drawn upwards by the vortex, air below also circulates at high speed and thus high winds are generated below the object all the way down to the surface. But the cyclonic circulation is not strong enough to draw water materials into the upper atmosphere. So in conclusion, storm vortices, water spouts, tornadoes, and hurricanes in the Earth's atmosphere are gravitational vortices created by massive objects, stellar cores, which are members of the planet X system of dead stars and which enter the solar system as comets. A gravitational vortex connection with the surface is demonstrated when water or surface dust is drawn up into the vortex. A hurricane producing object is larger and thus produces a larger vortex, but does not reach minimum critical altitude and thus the vortex it creates does not reach the surface. And even though cyclonic air circulation is produced under the object at the surface, it cannot draw water or other dense surface materials upwards. Those are the references. This is Dr. Claudia Albers, Planet X physicist. Thank you for watching.